in the first movie, confidence intervals, understanding how they work, you were shown the general idea of what confidence intervals are and how and why they work. Then you were ready for part two. The movie Confidence Intervals, How They Work, Part 2, showed you how to calculate a 95% confidence interval for the population mean, when the value of the population standard deviation is known. Now, this movie will cover the last missing piece. What if I use a confidence level that's different from 95%? What changes? Let's see how the critical value Z is affected when we change the confidence level. Remember that we can standardize our sampling distribution into the standard normal distribution by converting every sample mean into its z-score. So this standard normal distribution that we will be working with represents the z-scores of all the possible sample means that we could get, the sampling distribution. Let's go over the notation. The entire area under the normal curve is equal to 1. The total area in the two tails is equal to alpha. Then what would 1 minus alpha be? Our confidence level is represented by the notation of 1 minus alpha. Now, what notation do we use to represent the area in each of the two tails? Since their total area is alpha, each tail has half of this, alpha divided by 2. Let's look at our critical value Z. What's the important thing to note here? This is the z-score where the area in the right tail is alpha divided by 2. Big important concept. What exactly is this critical value Z telling us? It tells us how many tick marks, standard errors, we need to go above and below the population mean in order to contain the middle 1 minus alpha confidence level percentage of all the possible sample means we could get. 95% in this example. Let's look at what happens to our critical value Z when we increase the confidence level, 1 minus alpha, from 95% to 98%. The confidence interval gets wider. Does it make sense to you that if you make the interval wider, you will be more confident that the interval will contain the population mean? Sure it does. The larger the interval is, the more likely it will contain the population mean. How many tick marks, standard errors, do we need to go above and below the mean to contain the middle 98% of all the possible sample means that we could get. 
the first thing you should always do is make a sketch. Why? The sketch allows us to see what the area in the right tail will be. If 1 minus alpha is 98%, then what would alpha have to be? 2%. If alpha is 2%, then what would alpha divide by 2 have to be? 1%. Now, what would the z-score have to be so that the area in the right tail is 1%? You will now use a skill you developed earlier in this class to find this z-score. We use the function inverse norm on our TI-8384 calculator to find this. Inverse norm, area to the left, center, spread, where the center is 0 and the spread is equal to 1. Do you see that our z-score here is at the 99th percentile? The area to the left of this z-score is the 98% plus this 1% for a total of 99%. Press the second key. Press the VARS key. And then 3 to select inverse norm. Let's enter in 0.99, comma, 0, comma, 1, right parenthesis, and then press the Enter key. Our critical value is 2.3263. When we round this answer off, let's go out to at least four decimal places. This will minimize round off errors in our calculations. What does this number tell us? It is important that you know this. We need to go 2.3263 standard errors above and below the population mean in order to contain the middle 98% of all the possible sample means that we could get. When our confidence level was 95%, we had to go out 1.96 standard errors. When our confidence level increased to 98%, we had to go out farther, out to 2.3263 standard errors, in order to contain this larger area that is centered in the middle.